Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay, Chuku, Anthony. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Bule. Who is that? I kept saying, okay, 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 the other time. I'm... Okay, so it's him. <laughs> Mr. Oye Bule. What's that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Bacas. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's what we know. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, Bacas. One like, of those mad men on the street. Yes, yes. One of those creatively mad people yeah. that you see on TV. Yeah. Yeah. You shall have to put that I yeah. appendage. Oh, yeah, yeah, very, very important. So that to distinguish. <laughs> there are many mad people in Nigeria. <laughs> Some of them are in Abuja. <laughs> <laughs> Some are in Lagos, yeah. <laughs> so it's good to add the adjective. Okay. Yeah. Marco Bosi wala. <laughs> on which on which madness spectrum are you? <laughs> Don't put a boy in our pockets. <laughs> so be careful. This right, morning. I'm gonna be careful. Uh-huh. You know, my question <laughs> to you today. Does not... okay need any introduction? <laughs> well, he I has been introduced. So. Yeah. If you don't know, okay, please yeah. Google it. <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to ask you yeah. questions around your most, your least, mm-hmm. your, you know, mm-hmm. first of all, mm-hmm. your most, your first foray into comedy. Okay. Uh, the very, very first time, you know, there are two categories. One is professionally, the other one is as, mm-hmm. as an amateur trying to, you know, just do your thing and just be happy doing it. All right? So the first time ever I was in front of an audience trying to talk nonsense and make people laugh you know, was in Federal Government College, Port Harcourt, all right? And it was forced. It was not, uh, it was done under duress, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it kind of... How is know, it under, how was it under... Yeah, that? because, um, so, when we were in FGC, Port Harcourt, uh, my friends, you know, found me very funny, you know, like, this guy can crack anybody up. I wasn't seeing it that way. Me, I was just seeing it as being with my peers and just generally being myself, but somehow people liked it. Back then, we used to have um, social nights on Fridays. So one of them reported to the uh, social prefect and said, this guy is funny, he has to entertain one of these social nights. <laughs> so this, the social prefect came to my uh, dormitory and said, you're performing on Friday. I said, perform what? I wonder. They said, you're, you're, you entertain the school, do what? <laughs> because you can imagine, we were talking like uh, 85, yeah. You understand? We are talking like 1985. Yeah, so (laughs) there was no comedy industry or anything close to comedy. So in my head, I'm thinking, what they say, whatever you've been doing to your friends that they find very funny, you come and do it for the benefit of all of us. You know, so I I realized that it was going to be a big issue, so I started prepping myself, but I didn't know what to do. Like, you know, gisting with your friends, them finding you funny is different from standing in front of the whole school. Mm. Anyway, uh, they came, I went. Honestly speaking, within the first two minutes, I... I can't remember what I said or did, but people were laughing. So I, my confidence kind of grew, and you know, I liked the feeling afterwards, the recognition afterwards. Like, okay, you have something, something you, know, you have something, you know. Something did, so okay. finally, by the time I, I got into the university, you know, um, there was still no like stand-up comedy thing that we knew about. It's mm. not the era of internet, you know, that you could know what was happening abroad, you know. So we are what we call an association of backbenchers, people who will sit at the back of the amphitheater and heckle anybody who was performing. You know, so I was one of the uh, ogre, the noisemakers. The chairman. So we will stress everybody Performer. that comes on campus to come and entertain, you know. And people were loving it. Till organizers of shows will now say, okay, I beg. I beg. Instead, where you could disturb, just cook up microphone and just do something. You know, so we started doing skits, myself and some of my friends way back then. And fast forward to when I came to Lagos in 1993 for my youth service. As I headed to Ikpaja, I knew that if there was a drama troupe, uh, NYC drama troupe, I was going to be a member. So I became a member of the NYC drama troupe, 1993 batch. You know, went to Abuja for the drama competition. We did not win, you know. So came back to Lagos again. I started looking for Zebe Jiro and wherever they were producing fortunes on NTA. Uh, I got an opening there. Zeb, you know, gave me an opportunity. That was my first exposure on, on national television mm. with Fortune. So Hollywood was evolving at the time. Mm. Naturally, one gravitated towards mm. movies and all that. And the rest is history. What was your first professional comedy performance? Uh, the first professional one. That would be the first one they actually paid you money for. Yeah. Uh, I won't remember because remember how we got into it is way back then. 
it's not like uh, we are doing an event, we need a comedian, come, we'll pay you. No. Mm. It was more like, uh, you know, this is your program. Or if you can give me five minutes, um, I will do something that you will like. Wow. And they'll be like, okay, um, you know what? We don't, it's, 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 it's a corporate event. Mm -hmm. There's no time for jokes, mm -hmm. you know. But if you're sure, if you're sure, if I like what you do, maybe I'll consider you after. So you go first, then if they like it, then they'll find you something. <laughs> oh God. Oh my God. We now pushed the art form to the point where yeah, we became like a permanent fixture mm. in events. Yeah. People know that it's going to get boring at some point, so we need these guys to mm. come and break their eyes and do some. So in the early stages, yeah. how did you cope with we will find you something? We will find you something ain't gonna pay your rent. Yes. Ain't gonna pay your bills. Yes. So they were finding you something, but you mm. had bills to pay. Yes. How and did you, know, you for, cope? Apart from the fact that it won't pay your bills, as a creative, it's embarrassing. You know what you bring to the table. Yeah. It's just like you now. Maybe someone needs your services to host an event. You know the quality that you bring to that event. But the person is saying, uh, because we are not really sure where to categorize you, mm. we are going to let you do the job. Afterwards, if we are impressed, then we will we'll, find you 20K. We'll find, we'll find you something. You know, it, it belittles you, it, it reduces you, it tampers with your ego. But you, you, know, you kept on. But yeah, yeah. Why? For me, my approach to life is I know what I've got. I need the platform to let it shine. Mm. I have to present it because if I don't present it, I can't sell it. All right? So I know that if you allow me to show you, you're going to get yeah, hooked. You'll buy. And once you're hooked, then we'll now sit down and talk the price. Even till tomorrow, I still do that, you know, in some circumstances. <laughs> I let you get a feel of what can be done. And when you like it, then we'll talk. And at that point, you can't, you can't do without it. So far, what would be your <laughs> biggest yeah. outing? Uh, the biggest, the biggest. I think the biggest, the biggest will be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening tomorrow? Yeah, okay. One night stand. What will be your biggest <laughs> so far until today, September 30th? All right. I, I, I've done a lot of big stuff. But I will tell you the ones that kind of uh, put me on edge more than anyone else. You know, because big. You get yeah. on edge? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No, no okay. Artists. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Slow down. Yes. Okay gets on edge. Yes. Say so you, you, no. you get butterfly inside your belly. Exactly. It's a lie. Most performers, especially stand-up uh, uh, artists, because it's just you, the microphone, and the audience, will yes. have butterflies. Yes. We'll try to manage it backstage before we come on stage. But the butterflies will be very small. It will small still be there because well, you don't they, know they what to expect. Ones, and you know, our art form is so tough that you have to impress within one minute. So as I'm doing one night stand tomorrow, I don't know. I don't know what the audience will be expecting. I don't know what will happen because a lot of inspiration will come on stage. So one of the ones that I, I think has given hmm. me the most butterflies was when they were opening the National Stadium in Abuja. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I was one of the few artists listed to perform at the opening of a stadium. So imagine that large space standing in the middle of the field or maybe one end of the goalpost holding the microphone and trying to make everybody in the stadium laugh. First, you won't see their facial expression to know how they are reacting. Mm -hmm. Second, even if they laugh, you, you probably will not hear yeah. from <laughs> that. So you're just hopefully talking into the microphone and believing oh, why, oh. that <laughs> by some divine intervention, <laughs> it will work. <laughs> you know, so, uh, mm. so that Abuja event was tough. The next one was the first uh, Star Mega Jam that uh, brought a willow to Nigeria, you know. I was uh, billed to host the show. Nigerian Brewers had contacted me. It was supposed to happen at the stadium in Lagos, hmm. you know, National Stadium. You know, the first time that a show will be coming to National Stadium in my own era that I know about. And, okay, you will be hosting. <laughs> then, a <laughs> few minutes to the event, there was general gridlock in Lagos. Everybody trying to get to the stadium because Awilo was very hot then. Yes. Mm. Everybody <laughs> wanted to see Awilo. It was the days of Makosa music, you know. By the time we got to the stadium, there was no, no way for even the MC <laughs> to, get, to, get, <laughs> to get in. Mm, it wow. was insane. Dogs, police, trying to do crowd control. 
the police got tired, their dogs got tired, <laughs> and they went to rest. The people <laughs> surged to the stage. Jeez. Stage was shaking in excitement. Uh, now in my head, what do I do? Is this stage going to collapse? Are we even going to make it out of here tonight? You know, so mm. those events were, were huge. Mm. Uh, Head on, on, on and on and on like that. Yes. What's your most memorable joke so far? Mm, memorable. I, I wouldn't say a particular joke stands out for me. It's for the audience to say which one is the most memorable. The one that you've them. gotten the most feedback. Uh, the, the most feedback. I think it's the if police. If it is vulgar, don't I think, say it. I think it's the police joke. It's the police joke. Okay. <laughs> I got lots of feedback. I got a bit of backlash. A whole lot of things. It, it generated a whole lot of commentary. You understand? What was it about? Because it was a satire on, on the police and how they handle things in Nigeria, you know. Yeah, and it was born out of someone's true life experience. But the inspiration just came on stage, you know. So it's something that you need to go on YouTube and see, you know. And funny enough, it was supposed to be, you know, a, a hit or a dig on the police force. But it turns out that the police people like that joke more than anyone so else. So yeah, tell us the joke, because I don't remember it. <laughs> you have to come to the one night stand what you, What's wrong with this, my I friend? Do, I will do part of it that okay, day. Okay. Uh, or you Google Is it, it the one that you told me, the president? Uh, no, right I'm there. It's okay. No, no. I was going to remind right you there. about that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's that one. the joke. That's the one, right I'm. <laughs> Have I not repeated that to you? Right I'm there. Uh, yeah. yeah. You go there, you bath. Yeah, you bath. For your house. Yes. Right arm. Yeah, you naked. <laughs> right you arm. sleep. And you know what made them touch you? Uh, you wicked. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what a memorable it? joke. Yeah. <laughs> What's been your most challenging experience in your 30 years on stage? Uh, the most challenging. Okay. The most challenging. So many challenges, honestly, you know, ranging from doing work and not getting paid to, you know, oh people giving you checks that will bounce oh to, no. you know, not what? getting support from those you think that ordinarily should, will, should you. you know, give you some sort of support, you know, to losing your freedom. You see, you, you don't understand how it is. Most celebrities deal with this, but oftentimes nobody talks about it. You know, fame can rob you of your privacy. Yeah. You know. Not it can. It does. It does rob you of your privacy. Yes. And nothing prepares you for that level of invasion. Mm. You know, people just feel like they are part of your life. Yes, no. If anything is happening in your life, they should have a say of in it. Of course. So you're forever because protecting yourself. You are our property. Yes. He yes. belongs to us. You belong to the people. As yes. if you create, you, they created you. As if they created you. <laughs> or created your brand. If anything is going wrong in your marriage, they feel that they have a say. Mm -hmm. If it's going wrong in your house, in fact, to where you eat. So you go walk into an Amala joint, you want to enjoy Amala with Begri and all the other orishi orishi mm. inside it. No, they, they, ah, you, they come here. Mm -hmm. People like you, they eat here. Mm -hmm. you, you, you interplay, ah, ah, you, the economy. Are you not supposed to be in business class? Ah, for goodness sake. <laughs> I mean, if my money don't reach, can't I just? I wonder. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're forcing yourself to live what would have been your normal life. Hmm. You know, so, but thank God, I intentionally from day one told myself that I wasn't going to lead, live according to the dictates of the people of that society. I work for. Of the people that I work for, the masses. You, you, um, you, you granted an interview where you said from the very beginning yeah. that you were in pursuit of happiness. Yes. What informed that? Um, okay, by my very nature and upbringing, I grew up in a very happy home. We were not rich, but we were surrounded with so much love. You know, at home, we'll, evenings, like, we'll, we'll just gist and laugh and make jokes. And I just, there was some, there's, some, there's something about happiness that you can't really quantify. You know, it's not about money. It's not about, you know, wealth, affluence. It's, you know, when you're happy, you're happy. You like the feeling, you know. So, um... When I was going to choose a career after graduating, 
Uh, I knew. Sorry, sorry. Just put a comma there. What yes. did you study? I read agricultural engineering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a farmer. Yes, I'm supposed to be a farmer. <laughs> you know, a mechanized farmer. <laughs> you know. So, anyways, so for me, for me, it was about everything had to do, and even till tomorrow, if it does not give me, if it does not bring happiness, relationship, work, whatever, if if it's not going to lead to happiness, I don't want to be part of it. Oh. Yeah. Even if it's going to bring money. Yes. And that, that was why from day one, I intentionally chose the things that I did. Look, when I came into Lagos as a young man, I was tempted in so many different ways by so many different people. You understand? <laughs> and I'm talking about, you know, fraudsters to drug dealers to everybody. <laughs> I was approached. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. When you're in entertainment, you're approached to peddle drugs. Yes. Really? Yes. Really? I've been approached overseas. I've been approached in Nigeria. Yes. By drug dealers. Wow. They first shower you with gifts, then they show up in your hotel and they talk business. And they tell you other people who are doing it are making money. Oh, God. <laughs> so it's dangerous. So as a young man, you know, you go through all this. But for me, it's... I want to be able to sleep mm. well. If you knock my door and say, who is that? I open. You know, I'm not afraid of the police or any law enforcement. You know, my life is like this. Anytime you can go and check my record, you verify it. You <laughs> you go, I'll go to court. <laughs> yeah, my friend. So I tried from day one, you know, just to keep it simple. You know, happiness, happiness, the pursuit of happiness. That is it for me. So I, I may not be super rich, but I'm a happy person. Okay. Okay. You so. found the happiness oh, yes. that you were in search of. Yes. And life, because life is a continuous process, so we are still on it. Okay. Have you ever got into trouble in the course of doing your work? Uh, trouble, yes. Did you, you, know, because... did you ever rob anybody of the wrong side that they actually uh, took it up with you? Yeah. You, you, you know, the thing is, I tell people, when I, from when I turned 50, you know, something became clearer to me that at 50... You know, by the way, I'm, I'm way past 50 now. That at 50... Yeah, closer to 60. Yeah, I'm, I'm tending towards that direction. <laughs> so when I turned 50, I told myself that, you know, it became clearer that at 50, if you're not a billionaire in dollars, not Naira, Naira is losing value every day, all right? If you're not a billionaire in dollars at 50, the only thing you have left is your fundamental rights of free speech. <laughs> That's the only thing that you have. You understand? Uh, and if you don't use it, you are shortchanging yourself. You get? So you can't be poor at 50 and be silent. You understand? Fella said, if you talk, you die. You don't talk, you die. <laughs> you die for nothing. <laughs> they go, you better, you, you, you better, you better you die, die for something. You die, you run fully. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so at 50, I, I, I realized that uh, society... Uh, fails when good people don't talk. Okay, let's so I decided spend. to talk. So most times when you're opinionated mm. and when you use your platform to try and address some ills of society, there are people who don't like it. All course. right, we have about two minutes to go. Yeah. Um, mm. You're 30 years on stage. Yeah. How does that feel, honestly speaking? Yeah. Honestly speaking, I don't feel like he's 30. You know, maybe, like I said, because I'm in the pursuit of happiness and when you're happy, time does not really count. You know, so I, I th 30 years on stage doesn't feel like 30. Okay. I feel like I still have like 30 more in me. All right. So I, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy with the accomplishments I've made in those 30 years, mm -hmm. impacting on the young ones. Recently, as part of the celebration, we'll produce a movie which will premiere on the uh, 24th of November. Bank Alert is the movie. I went to a few universities to discover some new talents. Some of them will be performing at the show tomorrow. The four finalists will mm -hmm. compete to win one million naira at the show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, so to also encourage the young ones and give them the platform. Mm -hmm. You know, so and um, the, of course the mega concert which is happening at a cool hotel uh, tomorrow. You know, time uh, time is red carpet um, seven p.m. I will be on stage by ten. Those of you who like to show up around twelve midnight, you will be you will be late. I'll be on stage. I'll do one hour of live comedy. 10 to one 11. One hour from 10 to 11. 
if you are not seated by 10 o'clock, you will miss OK Bakazi life. And it's going to be explosive because it's a combination of 30 years of work. And we are going to be fearless. That is what we have been since. You understand? That is why I, I, I did not invite lots of politicians. I want to express myself. <laughs> did you invite the police? <laughs> no, the police will be there. The police, they are my friend. <laughs> oh, police is your own friend. Oh, yes, they are my own friend. <laughs> well, the, the okay, least we can do, okay, is um, to, to just congratulate you. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you mm -hmm. for your sacrifices. Yeah to, whether we like it or not, it is nation building in its own way. Okay. By the way, December 23, you are yeah. here again for DSS. Ah, How did that feel, by the way? We will arrest him again. Feel, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> what happened that day? So many people went on his timeline, yeah. and they were saying, ah, this is what this they government will do. They have arrested you. They have arrested you. DSS. <laughs> How did that feel? And my brother, I was getting calls as well. Really? People were really, like, worried. That was going on. It was, you know. <laughs> Okay, uh, we can't let you go. We only have half a minute. Okay. We can't let you go without us leave, leaving us with a joke today. I, I, what do I have? Like, is it not a joke that we've been doing since? Ah. This country is not a joke right now. <laughs> you need any other thing to crack it up. No. Be like when I avoid that trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been avoiding some. Do you like this state of Malabu? <laughs> And um, okay, okay, we thank you very <laughs> much for coming. And that is the end of the uh, okay, sunrise for today. <laughs> thank you very much for being a part of our program this morning. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Don't even answer. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. That's uh, sunrise, sunrise this morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>